and they have storms and rains, and so that's causing some problems. So that's why we're going on late, but we're going to try to get as much in as we can. Let me go ahead and give out the toll-free number in case anybody does want to call in during the show tonight. The toll-free number is 877-876-5227. 877-876-5227. And I've got a special guest tonight. It's Gladys McCoy. And she's an old, 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 old friend of mine. <laughs> Not that old, Dolores. <laughs> Don't let that offend you, Gladys. <laughs> but we've known each other at least 25 years anyway. Yep. You know, most of the people I have on the show are people that I've known a long time. But Gladys, uh, you're the, what, what do you want to call it, the um, the head? The uh, Well, I'm the co-founder of the organization, the Ozark Research Institute. I didn't know what your official title was, but she is with the Ozark Research Institute are what's known as the ORI over here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And they do wonderful work with healing, and they have classes. So I'm going to be letting her explain this. But I've known her for so long that I was in on well, this is the very beginning of all of this, so I know the history of it. But we're going to fill everybody else in also. But Gladys, I do want to say, back when I first met you, it had to be over 25 years ago, you weren't into any of this at all, were you? No, ma'am. You guys scared me to death. (laughs) You came a long way. Yes, ma'am, I have. So, and it's been a good long, I mean, it's been a good thing, the changes that have happened with me since the first time I sat in on one of your sessions and observed um, your client that night. I think it was Phil, but it was really kind of a strange thing for me to observe. Coming from the background I came from. (laughs) We were at Billy Cooper's. That was the very beginning when I was doing the first uh, session that ended up in some of the books. Mm -hmm. And I was exploring back in those days, too. Yeah. But I think in those days, all this stuff kind of scared you, didn't it? It scared me a lot because I was um, brought up in a um, in an Assembly of God Pentecostal church, and um, I was really afraid of this stuff. It, it all seemed very, um, mm, I don't know how to say the word, but um, it just wasn't right <laughs> to me at that time. Um, the dowsing work that we did was okay. But yeah. not not the healing things that um, we were doing at that time, or Harold was doing at that time, and um, and the power of thought things, the things about you know what your mind can do and what you can create for yourself, and um, but I uh, like you said, I've come a long way from that scared little I'm, person. I can understand because a lot of the churches still think this is work of the devil. Oh yes, yeah, so I was. You were coming from that position way back in mm-hmm. those days. Yeah, but, but you know, I had um, quadruple bypass surgery done 23, about almost 23 years ago now. And um, Harold was still going to, to Billy Cooper's at that time. And um, after that surgery, I realized that what they, I had been taught as a child all those years was not true. I knew uh-huh. a different... I knew a different, I'm going to say God, but you can call it whatever you want to. Um, but I know that there's something much, much more powerful out there that helps us. And in the, in the helper that I had was, was kind and loving and gentle. And my whole, whole outlook changed at that point. And well, of course, the... Tell us about that experience. I don't remember ever hearing about that one. Well, you know, um, or, or the, the group at Billy that. Cooper's did a lot of healing work on me um, during that process. And right after that's when I started going to the to the meetings um, to participate and more or less to say thank you. Because in a week's time, I was out of that hospital and I was at home, and I was walking almost a full mile in less than a week. Uh-huh. And that was unheard of 23 years ago. Yeah. 
So I knew that they had made some intercession for me somehow. And like I said, when I came out of that surgery, I knew a different God than I did when I was a child. Well, I remember they used to have the healing circle is what it was, and they would yeah, the healing all circle. You know, work on people, which is the same thing your group does now. It's basically so the same go, thing. Yeah, you've taken it further. But let's go back, and see, but we're going to get your history in here before we go into what the organization does. Okay. But it, in those days, it was Harold. He was just discovering himself, too, Harold McCoy. What That's right. What do uh-huh. Well, I'll be, now, next week, we're going to have Harold on the show, and he's going to give us his story. But he w- found out he was a healer totally out of the blue, didn't he? Yeah, but, you know, the dowsing work, he knew, you know, how to do that. Even as a small child, he knew that. And yeah. and I understand, you know, I understood later uh, that, um, you know, I was married to him for over 16 years before I knew he could even douse. And um, then we, he started doing all these other things. And, I, um, you know, he could actually look at a picture and describe people, you know, when he first went into the military. He could tell the guys what their girlfriends were like and um, their personalities. So, you know, he had that in him, but I never knew it uh, in all those 16 years. He was hiding all of that back then. <laughs> well, you know, he was in the military at that time, and um, he was an officer uh, in the um, military, and uh, he, he had no reason to, to use it at that time. Yeah. So, um, but, but I, you know. I, back those days, we were just uh, doing this in, like, little private groups. Let's talk about what happened that created the ORI, the Ozark Research Institute. Okay. Well, Harold was um, he was a member of the of um, the American Society of Dowsers, and was actually the president of that society for over four years and a trustee for uh, about eight years. Yeah. And um, he knew some of the things that he was doing as a dowser that there was more to it than just the dowsing rods because it seemed like when he asked for a specific amount of water, you know, at a a, a certain depth, he seemed to always find exactly what he was looking for. And he said, you know, there has to be a connection here in the fact that I'm asking for this and I'm being given what I'm asking for. He knew it wasn't the dowsing rods that were giving him this information. And that's why he started the Ozark Research Institute. Um, It just came to him that he needed to delve into what part the mind had to to do with creating what he was asking for. And um, so he started, and and the healing work, um, we couldn't do that type of work through the American Society of Dowsers because it's not, they're a nonprofit organization just like we are, and it's not in their charter, so it couldn't be done. So in the charter that ORI has, it is written up, and we are chartered in the state of Arkansas to do research into the power of mind, the power of, of, um, of um, prayer, the power of laying on of hands, and um, and what part the mind plays in miraculous healings and the creation of the illnesses and situations in our lives. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Harold had the idea, and we created a 501c3 that is there for education and scientific purposes. And that's what we do, and we did that back in '92. See, and I think you remember I mean, even before we were an organization. Yeah, but when I remember we were at a conference in Lake Hamilton, you mm-hmm. know, down by Hot Springs, whenever you were talking about forming this. And that's and all that's he was I doing was talking about members. forming. What? And But I think you paid your dues. <laughs> yeah, I became a charter member before you yes, really you did. had anything uh, up and running. Yep, you did. So. But that 
um, before you even had your building or anything. But how many yeah. years ago was that? The building, we got the building back in 96. But we were actually, our tax exempt year, the year that we were um, actually an, an organization, was 1992. Okay. And... Uh, the building uh, we got in um, 1996, and it was paid off in two years um, mm. with the assistance of our of our members. So we've been in that building, you know, um, since 96, and it's it's just been wonderful. Um, it's it's a, a good home for all our eyes. Wasn't there a story about um, one of you seeing the building before you even bought it? We, you know how we programmed your books, your first book, yeah, remember? <laughs> we saw you coming in and setting the books down in the middle of the circle and autographing them for everybody before they were ever published. And um, we did basically the same thing because in the meditation, we um, were programming a place for ORI. To, because it was here at the house, and it was busting at the seams with ORI stuff, and um, we needed a place. And um, in that meditation that night, when we came out of meditation, I said, I saw the building, because I did, just as plain as anything. I saw a very large brick building with windows all the way around it. And, of course, Harold kind of laughed at me, because we were at that point looking for a little tiny two-bedroom house or something like that. Yeah. And um, but and we actually went to look at a little two-bedroom house just down the street uh, from where our building is and realized it was not sufficient. So we um, pulled out the drive and started up the road, and, and uh, we passed this big church building on Locust Avenue there in Fedville, and I said, you know, that looks kind of like that building I saw in meditation. It wasn't in as good a shape as, as it was in my meditation. And uh, it took a lot to bring it back into what it is today. But um, we had to search to find out who even owned the building. No one knew. <laughs> and we found out the local hospital owned it. And so they paid, you know, they sold it to us. The only thing they wouldn't do is uh, sell it to us and then carry the note on it. So um, we put our farm up in hot to get the building, and um, two years later it was paid for, and we had a big ceremony and burned the, the you know, the um, papers up at the uh, conference that year. And uh, But everything that has happened for this organization seems like it, it was meant, it's meant to be. Things just happen for us. When we put out the information that we need something, we start getting it. And, um, and I work the same way. I don't, yeah. Now it happens so fast. I don't even have to even uh, put it out more than once, and it immediately I know. happens. Right. But things speed it up. I think that's why. Because but we found that you can create anything you want. All you have to do is think it and picture it, and you can have it. That's right. But, That's right. But or let, let's talk about then the ORI, the Ozark Research Institute. Let's talk about what it does. Well, our mission is to serve humanity through education, healing, spiritual awakening, and holistic um, research. And so we have many different research projects that go on continually um, as to... Um, you know, we're really trying to find out what part your brain really does have in, you know, these healings that happen and, and things, other things that happen in our lives. And um, also, which healing modalities seem to work best for certain problems that are going on with people. And it's not just healing. It's resolution of problems that people have in their lives. Right now, we're getting a lot of prosperity, you know, calls. But we have, on Tuesday night, a group of people that gather at 7.30 in our, at Arkansas time, that's central time. And there's usually uh, 19 people is a small group for us now. There's usually 30, 35 people in there. And um, we 
do what we call a healing meditation. And uh, we use the white light. We use unconditional love. Um, we've actually come to the conclusion that um, the, the unconditional love is the most powerful healing modality that you can use. Yeah. Unconditional love is something that, um, a kind of love that comes, that is so pure that it asks nothing of, of anybody. It just is. It's there for you. And um, people have said, well, how can it be anything but unconditional if it's love? And I said, well, few people have ever truly experienced unconditional love. Because even as children, you know, our mommy's always said, if you're good, I'll love you and I'll do this and I'll do that, you know. So we all have had, you know, conditions put on our love. But unconditional love that I believe comes straight from the divine is the most powerful thing that you can use for healing or the white light from the divine. We've worked on many, many people all over the world, and we get phone calls every week. We'll have hundreds of phone calls. Um, Right after Christmas, we had 197 people that had called in that week. On a regular basis, not quite that many, usually about 100. But people call from all over the world, Dolores. And... um, do you work on each one? I mean, work on that many at each Everybody each that calls gets some individual treatment. On Tuesday night, no, we don't individually work on that many. On Tuesday night, we only work on maybe four of them. And then the rest of them go in the bowl, and all they get is total focused energy to, you know, the bowl. Um, but their names aren't necessarily called out. But I do put slips out of, of people's names, their age, and the perceived problem or the resolution, and um, the people that come on, on a regular basis take many of those names home with them and work with them during the week. And um, we've had wonderful, wonderful things happen for people, um, you know, getting jobs, um, uh, any number of... of um, healing things that have happened. Um, a cancer that was diagnosed as such and then turns out to be something totally different when they get in there and um, start doing the work. You know, it can just be, you know, blood clots or things like that. And um, I don't know how this happens. That's why we're trying to find out. That's why we, we have this organization, so we can find out why it works sometimes and the way we want it to, and why it doesn't every time. And everyone gets some kind of help from this energy that's sent out, and I believe it's right for them at that time, even though it may not be exactly what they want. And if their healing is to go ahead and pass to the other side, um, then it's always with, ease and comfort, and and it's never traumatic for, for them or their family. So that is, that I, is a healing. That's what I found in my work is that, you know, you have a life plan, and yes. we can never interfere with that person's life plan that they come in with and their free will. If it is their free will, it is time for them to go. Uh, we can't do anything about it. No. But otherwise, we do the best we can. Yeah, but we can send them that loving, healing energy for their body to use however it's meant to be used. And so I don't believe we can do any harm doing the kind of work we're doing for others. Um, I mean, you know, if people call and they've got a lost animal, um, I do some dowsing work for them um, when they need that. Um you know, it's it's many different things that we do uh, for people that call. Um, we have uh, what we call a maintenance program for all of our members. And um, on Tuesday night, we send out the energy of continued good health and healing and prosperity for them and their families. And it's cut our workload down tremendously because we don't get as many phone calls now as we did before from our members. And um, 
And so that's helped a little bit because I know they're going to get the, the work done every week. But um, we do that. And then on, on first Sunday, we have a, um, a group that comes in, and normally we have a, a speaker. And there's no charges for the speaker. Um, so we have a pretty good crowd normally, 60, 70 people. And um, it's an educational thing. You know, it's just they tell us their viewpoint, and um, we always listen. And um, if we want to use it, we take it. And if we don't, we just, you know, let it go. Um, everyone's not ready for uh, all that information at times, just like I wasn't for many years. But all that time that I hung around with you people, <laughs> I was learning. And I didn't well, even I realize it. I was learning, too. That's one thing I liked about the group, because I had to have somebody to bounce it off of. All the strange That's right. things that were happening, you know, we couldn't understand them. We needed somebody we could talk to. Because, you know, I hear that all the time in my work now. People say, I can't talk to anybody about the things that I've had happen. They, if they're afraid they're going to think they're crazy or something. Or, as I said earlier, working with the devil. So they're afraid to tell anyone. So we needed a, a group, a place where we could talk and not worry about what people were going to think. Mm-hmm. So you, that's why the group was so important back in those days when we were all going there. Because this was really... Um, kind of hidden away um, back in those days. Um, there weren't a lot of us. No. And, um, Not in this area could of contract. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this area of Arkansas, anyhow. No, right? uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, since I've had the, the building, since we've had the building, and, um, you know, it's open to the public so they can come and go as they please. Um, but, um, I've, I had one man come by one day, and he started to, you know, in on me about being in a cult. And uh, when I told him what we did, and I said, no, sir, we're not. Uh, we are not religious. We are um, what we call spiritual. Yeah. But I, you know, and I explained to him on Tuesday night, you may hear the name of Jesus. You may hear God. You may hear Buddha. You may hear uh, Muhammad. I mean, there's no telling what, what words you're going to hear. They call on the angels and the guides and everything else. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you call it, it doesn't matter to us. Um, because if it works for whoever has called and asked for help, that's all we're interested in. No matter how they get the help or where, where they come from. But um, anyway, he came in and he started that. And all I said, I just looked at him and I said, you know, he, he said the demonic forces, and I said, you know, I am a child of God, and therefore, the demonic forces cannot harm me. And he looked at me and said, more power to you, lady, and he left. And and that's a good way to handle it. It is. You know, yeah. it was for me. Uh-huh. And, um, for me? Because you know you're doing good work. I know I'm doing good work. And um, so I don't, I just... You know, that's their path, and they can lead it however they want to, but I'm going to walk mine. And uh, I would like for them to respect us for doing it, you know. Um, we invite anyone that wants to come in to the building and attend any of the, the meetings that we have, but we make it very plain that we are not political, nor do we condemn anybody for the way that they speak or believe. And um, so... We have had ministers come in and um, sit through the meetings and um, enjoy the meetings um, when they finally uh, understand that we're just coming from the desire to help other people. Mm-hmm. And There's so, no control or anything in it. You know? There is no control at all. Um, like I said... It's an educational thing, even on Tuesday night when we're doing the healing meditations. Um, And we call them healing meditations, but like I said, it's resolution, you know, for many, many things that are going on in people's lives. And sometimes the people that call, all they want is a friendly ear, somebody to listen to them and and hear them. And um, 
so we're there for them if they want to call us and um, and talk. Um, we are a membership organization, as you know, and um, we are um, uh, supported very well by our members um, and have been uh, ever since we started. So, and the membership has never raised um, in all the years that we've been in existence for 16 years. We have kept the membership as low as we possibly could um, so that people could afford to be a part of it. And um, so, you know, of course, even now we are experiencing um, people not, you know, renewing because people just don't have money now. So we're offering to let them even pay it out if they want to. Because it is important for them to feel like they are part of it, and um, so well, I've had a few uh, psychics on the show during the, since I got back. They're fr- good friends of mine, and they say everything is going to turn around, especially by fall. That things are going to get better and better, and that we'll see a lot of things happening. So I think well, I the same for you too. You just hang in there, yeah. and it is going to turn around. You know, I believe that. I believe that completely. Um, that uh, things are going to get better, and um, and the way I handle that is that um, I don't watch a whole lot of the news on TV or read a lot of it in the newspaper or listen to it on the radio uh, because I think I need enough to know what's going on. But once a day is enough for me to hear what's happening in the world. Mm-hmm. I don't need to hear it four and five times. Because, well, as you, as you know, um, your subconscious mind can click into believing um, things that are happening very, very easily. And the negativity draws negativity. Yeah. So I try not to buy into that negative stuff on the, on the news and try to stay in the positive vein at all times. But it is going to get better. That's always telling people that anything you fear, you're going to draw toward you. That's and right. And that's when I was told, you know, in my work, they said, just don't buy into all these things that are happening. Do uh, you want to live in that world, or do you want to live in a positive world? Yeah. And you create the world that you live in. That's right. Uh-huh. With your thoughts, with that's your words, with your um, uh, beliefs, and um, every day. I mean, we create the good, the bad, um, every single day. Whatever goes on in our lives, and people don't like to hear that. They object very much whenever you tell them that, you know, we create these things. Um, I certainly would never have created open-heart surgery. I didn't think until someone pointed out to me that I had done it. And then as I thought about it, and that was in those days when I didn't believe, you know, and I thought, oh, you metaphysical nut. And um, I thought, would, thought about what she had said to me, and I realized that my mother had died at 49 years old. And um, I had for years said, please don't let me die as young as my mother did. And, you know, I was creating that exact thing. She died in a car wreck. And I almost died of a massive heart attack, you know, because they said if my heart had stopped, there wasn't enough blood going to it to start it again. And I was 49 years old. Mm-hmm. So That's a, I'm always telling people, be careful what you say because your body believes it. See, I guess that was my turning point, Dolores, yeah. when I really understood that that my words could do something like that in yeah, my thoughts. You can program your body so it'll believe you if you're saying things like that, but it'll also believe you if you're talking positive about I have a healthy body, I never get sick. It's what kind of a program you're going to put in your little computer. That's right. That's <laughs> but you said you were involved in research projects. What kind of research projects are you having there? Well, mostly, you know, what we're trying to do is right now, on the, on the third Sunday, I have a group that meets at the building, and they just kind of come in at 1 o'clock and hang out until about 5, and um, these are people that do different kinds of, of healing. Uh, 
they've been taught how to do touch or quantum, you know, and all yeah. those different modalities. And um, But they have no place to practice. So what we have done is turned it into a research project. And so they keep a record on everybody that comes in, and um, we put down what technique had been used on that person for what they figured was wrong with them, like headaches, you know, healing touch we know works very well for headaches. Um, you can pretty well smooth one of them out pretty quick. And um, so that's what we're doing with it. Also, every person that calls in to the Ozark Research Institute, we have a database where we put their name and their age and the perceived problem in the database. And uh, then whoever has done the individual work on them also goes in there with the healing modality or however they did the work that that person needed, goes in the database. And so we can actually pull it out at any time and say, okay, if we contact so-and-so, he can or she can um, take care of this problem. So that's how we, that's one of them. And then, of course, with that um, marvelous EEG machine that we have, we are um, se separating, you know, um, the brainwave levels um, that healers, hypnotherapists, um, and houseers um, drop into, and we found out that they all drop into all four brainwave levels at one time when they're doing any of this work. Mm. Now, now, I knew, I, you had, I knew you had a machine of some kind, but it, you were measuring brainwaves, but uh, I didn't know, you know how you were doing it. Yeah, and, and, and all of the scientists are telling us that it's an impossibility. Um, we have to send the uh, data away to have it, you know, analyzed. And um, they all are telling us that, well, if this is going on with this person's brain, then they have some brain damage. <laughs> but there's too many of them that are doing the exact same thing, Dolores. You mean so we know. All for a yeah. wavelength, they say that's impossible? Yeah, and uh -huh. see, when I did remote hypnosis on somebody, I dropped down into the four brainwave levels, but also my brain, and it shows on the screen that both hemispheres were working simultaneously, equally. And so they're really befuddled about this one. They don't know what to do with it. I think it's down in Arizona now. Isn't that being a analyzed. <laughs> but Isn't we know long? this works. Scientifically, we cannot line? prove it. Well, I was thinking of the Monroe Institute. Isn't that along the lines of what they do with their machines? Well, some of it, yeah. It uh -huh. is. And they actually have done some research on that exact thing. Mm. Um, but we have some, you know, we've had that done a few years back. Um, by a professor down in Arizona, and we have the data on that, um, the work that he did on Harold. And um, it's pretty profound. And um, so, you know, those are, the, those are the kind of things that we're doing on a regular basis. And um, I'm always, we have I'm members in 24 different countries. Uh, we have a number of Chinese people now because Harold just went to China. And... Um, they can't speak English, and we can't speak Chinese. So, <laughs> but um, but you it, know, I'm always telling people in, in on my show that you know what I found with my work. I think it's very much like scientific experiments. If you can repeat the same thing again and again and again and get the same results, it is like a scientific experiment, it, and, and it yeah. does add validity to it. Yeah, so I I think that should be proof for anybody. Well, yeah, but the scientific community will never believe it. But it's I mean, unless similar. we can give them, you know, but the, they'll, they'll keep telling us it's anecdotal. Anecdotal, you know, it's just uh, it's just not it's not solid proof. But we can I pull an awful lot of that good stuff out. 
the scientific experiments are doing the same thing. They're yes, they are. Experiment. Yeah. That's what I would think. It would fall into that category anyway. Yeah. But because it, that's what's in mind when we have healings time and time again, it should prove something. Yes. And every week before the meeting starts, I give what I call updates. Um, people have called back in because we ask people to call every two to three weeks and let us know if there's been any changes made in 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 their um, issues and. Um, so I get to tell people, you know, yeah, they did this and, and this has happened. And um, it really encourages all of us to continue to do this work. And um, yeah. we feel that we get just as much of a blessing as the people do that we do the work for. Um, because we sure do leave that building feeling wonderful for being able to do something like that. And the type of meditations... Right. I uh, beg your pardon? I said, you're, you're doing valuable work, but you also said that you do workshops, too, and travel around of a different kind, don't you? Yeah, I do. But, and, I, and I teach, you know, the value of your words, just like we were talking about, and um, affirmations. I, I work with affirmations a lot. And um, unconditional love, I have a, a way of, of running that energy through the body. And it seems to, to balance the body. And I teach that. And um, um, dowsing, of course, uh, clearing negative energies out of your homes and out of your business for to improve your home and to improve your business. And um, I've discovered I can do the same thing with a person. Um, uh, I call it adverse energy, anything that's harming my client. And to me, a disease is an adverse energy. Yeah. So kind of simplifying it, but, um, you know, this, this, ener- this, this energy is just getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and it's getting more heart-centered, and I believe that we will have a beautiful, wonderful world of peace and loving and gentle caring for every person if we continue to do the work that we're doing um, and use that heart energy to do it. And so that's what we're trying to do. And, uh, and that's always the thing. As long as you do it for the positive reasons. That's right. Every time negativity comes in, ego comes in, that destroys a lot of, of organizations' work. And that's when trouble happens, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the organization, that's, that's what that goes to. Mm-hmm. Ego or, you know, power struggles, and that brings a lot of very... A big organizations down that I've heard about. Yeah. So the main well, thing you you do have to keep coming from the heart and from the positive. Yeah. Well, we're still not a, a big organization, but we're growing, and um, more and more people are learning about us and uh, receiving help and and benefit from the organization, which is what we started to do, and we're still maintaining that that we're going to help as many people as we can. Um, on the path, whatever that may be. Okay, well, Gladys, you want to talk about the uh, the conferences you have, what you call the School of Thought? You yeah, have we to... have a we have two a year, and um, we do a, a convention in the spring in April. This year, it's the twenty fourth through the twenty eighth of April, and we have um, from twenty five to thirty speakers that come in, and. Um, we have a full day of dowsing class, and um, this year we have a full day of a meditation class um, that's going to be taught by a man from up in Springfield at the School of Metaphysics. And uh, so, and we do that. It's a five-day class, a five-day school, very reasonable. And um, then in the fall, we have what we call the Power of Thought School, where we have five different uh, teachers that come and you spend one day with each one of those teachers and you learn the technique of healing um, that these people use to work with their clients. Um, last fall we had somebody that taught astral travel. Uh, we had Dick Sutton here who taught um, how to um, astral travel as well as remote viewing. 
Um, I I can't remember everything that Dick tried. He taught four different things, and um, Patty Conklin came and taught, you know, her healing modality, and um, it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful thing to just be with that many people who are interested in what you're interested in. That's the main thing. You mm-hmm. have to, just to support that way. You know. Yeah, I mean, you've taught. You've been there just as a speaker and as a keynote many, many times over the years. Well, in fact, but you in, the have... very, in the very beginning, I took the whole Power of Thought school, too, but that was in the very beginning. And yeah. After that, yeah. I, was, I was a speaker when you had me come in. You know. Yeah. Well, but, the last your life is so busy. <laughs> well, that piece, that beat means somebody has just has got a caller. Okay, is somebody on the line? Hello? Okay, usually when we have a beep, that means someone's calling in. Oh. But we're down to we're not going to have much longer in you. If it is, they'll beep again, anyhow. Okay. Okay. But, um, so anyway, I think, you know, I'm finding that in my work. I get more and more clients who are coming who are either healers or they want to be healers. There's so many different modalities out there. So I see the interest in natural healing and alternative healing growing tremendously. I think people have come to the realization that they have to take charge of their life. And it's their responsibility to take care of their life and their healing and and whatever is going on with their life. And I think that's the best thing that's happening in the world right now. Yeah. is that we all take responsibility for ourselves and that we start with ourselves and do our healing within ourselves and come, you know, and heal our hearts. And when our hearts are healed, then everybody around us is going to get it. It's like the hundreds monkey kind of syndrome, you know, where one of them starts washing the potatoes, but this, in this instance, we're going to be healing our hearts and filling our hearts with that love and just spreading it from person to person. And I I believe that's how we're going to make the world we want, Doris. Yeah, I know. See, I have doctors coming to me as clients, and they're telling me uh, they're tired of the drugs and the uh, the surgery, and they're wanting to get out of the traditional medicine, mm-hmm. and they are going over in, into the natural. And I've had some of them on the shows who have started up their own uh, alternative clinics. Yeah. So I this happening more than the average person can. Ideally, if we could just... I I found in my work is that the body was made to heal itself. It has the ability to heal itself if we don't interfere. That's right. But a lot of it does go back to what's going on in the person's life and uh, the things that the doctor doesn't even take the time to ask about. And that people don't take the time to tell him. I know. You they just don't bother to tell them. Time to find out how is your marriage? How is your job? They don't. That that could be the main thing for the reason for their illness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. We're coming up to the top of the hour, but I want you to let people know how they can contact you. Now, do you do you still encourage people calling in for healing? Oh, absolutely. Um, all I they have to all they have to do is just call the. ORI number, and that's 479-582-9197. Or they can email us if they would like. Um, email is just ORI at IPA dot net. And give, up, give out the number again. Okay, it's 479-582-9197. Nine one nine seven. And the name of the uh, the email. What is that again? It's o r i at i p a dot net. Okay. Uh, do you have a website? We do. If they want to go on the website, it's Ozark Research, and that's o z a r k Ozark Research dot org. Okay, and if you're overseas, that's O-Z-A-R-K. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, because Brian's right. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you don't we'd have be to... Happy. We'd be happy to have them call Dolores if they need some help, any assistance of any kind. And uh, we're there Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. And if they want to, they can just leave us a message. If we need to call them back, we will. And you do try to uh, to work with as many people as you can. Oh, absolutely. That's what we're, everybody that calls gets some kind of help from somebody. They may not get it specifically from Harold or me or, you know, anyone else that works there but somebody we've got we've got people scattered all over the united states that um, do some of this healing work and uh, all they get is a name and age and whatever the resolution is that this person is asking for so there's I never any contact important. i think it's very important then if, if uh, you are spreading and you're helping a lot more people and I know Harold is still going all over the world, and he's spreading it all everywhere he goes also. Mm-hmm. Right. And next week, next week we're going to have Harold McCoy on the show to talk about his work. And his work keeps growing, too. Yes, but and changing. The main thing, you've given out your contact numbers, and you might be swamped. Who knows? Well, that'll be okay with us. It'll be fine. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll handle it somehow, so... Okay, but that's why I always like people to know there is hope out there that you don't have to resort to surgery and to drugs. There's a whole lot of other methods, a lot of healing modalities that people don't even know about. That's it true, but... With, it all goes back to the mind anyway. Yeah, but we do want them also to know, Dolores, that, you know, we can all work together, you know. Sometimes a person needs to go through that surgery. Because yeah. their mind can't accept it any other way. Yeah. So we deal and it's with okay them if that's what they need. We have to deal with the person at the stage they are at. That's right. Okay, well, that's we've right. come to the top of the hour now. I know we started later, but I think I better go off because i got another one coming right okay. here. Right? But thanks, Gladys, for coming on. I think uh, you've really helped people a lot. Thank you, Dolores. I appreciate it. And good night, everybody. Blessings. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.